Coming up on show 928, the BMW iX is revealed. The new name for the iNext. Plus on the podcast today, Hyundai's EV plans, a bigger battery for the Model 3, and Volvo trucks going electric. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening in the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Martin Lee here. I've been through every EV story today and whittled it down into just the news you need to know to save you time. Well, I'll start with this entry from Wikipedia, and it goes as I read. In February 2011, BMW debuted its sub-brand BMW i. To market the vehicles produced under Project i, BMW i vehicles are to be sold separately from BMW or Mini. The first two production models are the all-electric i3, formerly called the Mega City Vehicle, and a plug-in hybrid, the BMW i8. And I start the podcast with that Wikipedia entry today to illustrate that in February next year, it will have been 10 years since BMW launched their i brand. And... In the last 10 years, you would not say, I would not say, there has been 10 years worth of progress made. It's a happy, sad story today because the iNext now has a new name. Officially, it's called the BMW iX. Looks like a great car for some people, and it's a big car. Uh, However, when you look back at where they've been in the last 10 years, I would characterize it as a series of missteps, false starts, and mismanagement, if I'm honest with you as well. So, hopefully, a new dawn. And it'll be over 10 years by the time the iX is on sale next year since they first announced the i, BMW i sub-brand. Just think, if they'd started with the i3, as they did in 2013 when it hit the market, if they had moved forward at the pace they could have done with the talent they had in BMW, where where could they be now? Like, how many more millions of miles of zero-emission motoring could have been done if they hadn't you know lost great people that moved onwards when the the bmw i brand it didn't look like it had a future then it did then it didn't and it did and it didn't goodness me so from that possibly pessimistic start let's tell you all about the ix it's the new name for the i next and it's going to be on the market next year a bit about a year away they say it's going to be the second half of next year realistically when people start getting these in their driveway so these are the stats Let's start with the battery. It's big. It's 100 kilowatt hours plus. It's not specific, but 100 kilowatt hours plus. 500 horsepower plus. 370 miles plus. So these aren't specifics, but these are what the car will do at the moment. And actually, that's pretty good because on a 100 kilowatt hour pack, that's actually pretty efficient. That is around... Uh, not as good as Tesla Model S territory, but when you realize how big this vehicle is... I think it's pretty good if they can achieve those efficiency figures. Uh, the new iX has the same rough, rough exterior dimensions as an X5, which if you haven't seen a, a modern X5, it's a really big vehicle. Uh, it's about the same height as the X6. Uh, the big old wheels, the large wheels look like they're off an X7. Well, the iX is going to be BMW's electric flagship vehicle and it has the un- basically the same underpinnings in terms of the powertrain as the ix3 which is being made in china for the european and north uh sorry chinese market but not the north american market uh, the fifth generation e-drive is what we call it that means the motors the power electronics the charging technology and the high voltage battery so this is existing technology which is already in bmw vehicles uh, in the ix3 already and coming to the ix other Features you'll notice from the pictures, which I've been posting today on on my socials, uh, the hexagonal steering wheel, which is certainly interesting. I don't have to use it in practice; doesn't hurt my eyes too much. A rocker switch for the gear selection. Mm, they've put it back down where the gear stick would be, which is a shame. You know, the the i3 having it up as that uh, little dial thing by the steering wheel was was pretty innovative, but that's gone now, and it's gone back to a little rocker switch down where the, the gear stick would be. Nothing particularly uh, exciting about that. Big screen, of course, rather than two screens, one big screen, not quite as big as the uh, Honda E, for instance, but it doesn't go all the way along, but, it, you know, it's pretty big, covers the dashboard. Uh, it's made of lightweight components, which keeps the, the shell lightweight, curb weight down. Uh, it wouldn't be a major tech launch if they didn't talk about 5G technology, which is more of a buzzword these days than anything else, but it does allow for higher bandwidth and lower latency. Tech crunch, say, as we've all learned from recent phone launches, 
5G is more of a buzzword than a game-changing technology. But what's more important is that 5G will allow a vehicle to anything else. Communication. They call it cellular vehicle to everything. In other words, your car can talk to other cars using 5G. It'll talk to street furniture. It'll talk to street infrastructure without using a mobile network. So one example of the, I think how this could work well, if you are approaching a traffic light and there's nobody coming in the other direction or a cross section, your car would be able to talk to, and this happens already in some cities, uh, in trial projects, your car can say to the traffic lights, turn green. So rather than them being dumb lights on a timer or sensor, in advance, it can say, I'm approaching at this speed. And then if your car is on cruise control, it doesn't need to decelerate or slow down because, of course, then you're losing energy and it's more efficient. It's one small way in which if cars talk to each other and cars talk to the street and infrastructure, that we can move towards smart cities. It can also be good for safety as well, if cars are talking to each other so they know where other cars are. Anyway, moving on, back to the BMW. On improving the computing power of the iX, uh, which is necessary, BMW says it's got a sensor which processes 20 times the data volume of previous models. It's huge, and so that's why they've stacked it full of sensors. Uh, the According to Wired website, even though cooling grills are not necessary, BMW's they know it's polarizing. Their kidney grill remains. Like BMW know, this is the style we're going for. That huge kidney grill on the front. They know people hate it, but they must know that enough people love it to carry on doing it. Uh, again, it's subjective. It's not for me. Because the front of this car is basically a vertical kidney grill. It's just, it's massive. It's a slab of car to push through the air. I would prefer something more aerodynamic looking. It looks like a combustion car. Like, combustion cars look like they look through necessity. So the form follows the function. They have massive combustion engines up front. So the form of the bonnet and the front follows the function of having to have a big engine. If you're making an EV and form can follow function, you don't need to have this conventional look. But this car looks like an X5. Like, this doesn't look like an EV. This doesn't look like in any way that they've sat down with a blank sheet of paper. This looked like they, they sat down with their combustion plans. <laughs> you know, when let's stick with that. But that's fine. It's their money and their company. They can do what they want with it. But it wouldn't be for me. So the big grill is still there. It is, it's housing cameras and radar and sensors. And don't call it a grill, though. They want it to be called an intelligence panel. Okay. Now, the website Design Boom has taken a look at the design of it. They say with its reduced and uncluttered design language, the 12.3-inch driver's display and the 14.9-inch control display span the dashboard. Uh, they say that the hexagonal steering wheel uh, features multifunction buttons, and they say that there is an innovative rocker switch for gear selection. It's not innovative design boom website. It's putting the gear switch down exactly where the gear has always been. Not with a stick, but down there. Put it somewhere else. Doesn't even need to be a, a, a gear stick anymore down in the center console. It's an EV. Anyway. Anyway. As per Forbes, uh, design elements only surface when summoned. Uh, and so BMW call it shy technology. Again, look, this is more of a design launch than a car launch because i can tell you about the drag coefficient of 0.25 so it's pretty slippery for a big heavy car it's gonna be what two and a half tons plus but we don't know any of the specs because bmw haven't launched those today this is about how the car looks so it's 500 horsepower 370 miles plus ish 100 kilowatt hours plus ish battery there are some things which are good there are some things which are clearly there to make it look like a combustion car case in point you know how on a lot of premium cars now they have those at the rear where the exhausts would exit they're not the real exhaust exits they're kind of horizontal slats or slits or horizontal holes they make them look like where the exhausts are coming out and then if you look really closely or get under the car they've just got the regular old circular exhaust aiming downwards this has those this has those two areas where the exhausts would come out and they've but they've put a blue highlight around them. Well, it 
it, it doesn't need that. It needs a flat floor, and it should it, it should have a flat floor if it's, if it's an EV, and it should have the most aerodynamic possible rear. It shouldn't have these throwbacks to a combustion era when you had to make the cars look pretty as if they got some sort of sexy little slitty exhausts. Why put them there? I don't understand. It hasn't been mentioned in the launch. Maybe it's there for aero or something. It can't be. It's a throwback. Ugh. So, again, not for me, but clearly their research, their focus groups tell them that BMW buyers want to buy cars that look like existing BMWs. So good luck to them. Here, look, it's at least a year away from hitting the road. The BMW iX is now confirmed. Okay, let's move on. And Hyundai will have 10 eco models in the US by the end of next year. There's the Kona Electric, the Sonata Hybrid and Plug-in, and the Nexo Fuel Cell. Bless it. Uh, but they're the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's coming according to Motor1.com. There'll be 10 Hyundai um, eco models. So hybrids, plug-ins, and full electrics. The Kona was facelifted today. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Uh, there is no mention, though, of the Ionic the car, or Ionic the car. So, if you didn't know, they make an Ionic, which is a hybrid, a plug-in, or an electric. But Ionic <laughs> is the new name of their sub-brand. So when you talk about Ionic, you can either be talking about the car, which they currently sell, or the new sub-brand, which all their future cars will be called. They'll be the Ionic 5, 6, and 7, the 7 being the big SUV. On the roadmap, there is no Ionic car. The the existing car, Ionic, is going, but I think anyway, it's not on the roadmap, whereas their future cars are called Ionic, but will be different to the car they currently sell called Ionic because they're going to be on a new platform, the eGIMP, Electric Global Modular Platform. The eGIMP platform uh, is the 800 volt system, charging fast, etc., etc., uh, with lots of range and custom designed as an EV platform. So that's good stuff. As I mentioned, the Kona Electric has been redesigned today. Uh, the front end, very, very clean. The thing that was, again, personal, personal, subjective opinion, the front of the Kona was never my cup of tea. Too fussy. How do those little patterns and indents on the front um they've got rid of all that so now it looks like the front end of a model y that single crease very aero very clean very modern very pure very clean and i love it i mean gorgeous the this night and day for me it's still a kona but as of today go and have a look at the pictures i'll put them online looks much much better from the front end uh, the press release i was sent uh, is it does make me smile is funny uh, you know how the charging port is off to one side it's on the front but it's off to one side it always looks a bit like oh we couldn't put it in the middle so we've, we've put it off to one side for the those of an ocd persuasion in the audience will hate it but according to the press release let me read you this the front is complemented by an asymmetric charging point a feature unique to the kona electric which makes a strong statement about driving electric <laughs> who writes this stuff no the charge ports off to one side it does it should be in the middle <laughs> but it's not but they've said it's a unique feature brilliant they also say uh, that this ensures it has a dynamic appearance combined with a strong visual stance well hey look somebody got paid to write this stuff and i hope that they i hope that they were paid well for it because it's all bluster um but what is uh, a fact is that there's a 10.25 digital cluster behind the steering wheel now for the driver and the 10.25 multimedia screen looks really good all digital fantastic it's got a new blue link upgrade at the app is here now so you can charge you can look at the battery state of uh, charge you can do all those things that you should be do able to do on an app is finally here and working really well next generation of that it's got a ton of new sensors blind spot collision avoidance a uh, rear crush traffic collision avoidance that's the one where if you are backing out of your driveway into the flow of traffic which you shouldn't do you should reverse into your driveway and drive out forwards but anyway you know and you're leaning over the back seat and you can't quite see if you're about to have a crash it's got those sensors which say stop uh, it's got leading vehicle departure it's got a safe exit warning so you don't fling your door into a cyclist it's got a rear seat alert basically a bunch of new technology uh, the, it's always been high tech these cars are always loaded with technology it's got even more now uh, which is either 
a bad thing is about to happen alert or you're about to do a stupid thing alert and that is a good thing along with all the previous stuff lane keep assist and lane follow and intelligence speed limits and that's all good stuff uh, the really interesting about what's underneath this new kona let me read you this um under the surface some interesting changes might have happened it seems the kona electric which is made in europe made in czech uh, not only gets its battery cells from lg chem but now it's getting them from sk innovation as well both south korean companies at least that's what's been reported by the korean media today because some of them have, su have suffered battery fires and there's a recall but it appears it, the recall doesn't apply to all the cars and it looks like the recall doesn't apply to the 12,000 kona electrics made in europe which have the sk innovation cells which is interesting because uh, that must mean that they're using the new SK Innovation chemistry, which is the NCM811 cells, and LG Chem use the 712 cells uh, for people who like to track this. Interesting that the same car can have two different batteries in it, uh, different chemistries even. Same size, 64 kilowatt hours, but you would, I guess, not know unless there's a sticker underneath. You, you know, you have a crawl underneath it and have a look. But in theory, you'd never know which battery pack and which battery chemistry is in your particular Kona. Um, I don't know if when these go on sale, as the 2021 model year, uh, the UK website isn't updated as of me recording it. But again, subjective styling, I think it looks much, much better. And it's a really compelling EV. Now the app is all working properly and and stuff. Uh, a great, great, great car. A big battery, 64 kilowatt hours. Talking battery sizes, let's move on. It appears as though Tesla increased their range on the Model 3 recently, not just through efficiencies, new tyres, heat pump added from the Model Y, etc., but actually making the battery bigger. Earlier this year, we told you about Panasonic's statement they were making about achieving a 5% if energy density uh, improvement on the cells for the Model 3 and the Model Y. Now it looks like uh, that those batteries are finally inside cars because a European customer uh, got their registration information through and it says 82 kilowatt hours. Uh, now it used to say 78 kilowatt hours. So about a 4% increase, which lines up pretty well with Panasonic, having a 5% increase in energy density of the cells. The short, right, well, the standard range plus versions have so far been delivered in Canada and the US, but not in Europe, whereas this is a long range version that was coming to Europe with the bigger pack. So hopefully more get delivered and we can, we can find out more, but that's great that actually the long range version of the Model 3 is now 82 kilowatt hours. That's huge, isn't it? Much it goes, it goes a long way as well. Okay, some more stories. Volkswagen of America marked the start of the construction of their battery engineering lab at their Chattanooga plant. It's a $22 million facility testing and validating cells and battery packs for North America, says Green Car Congress. The new lab will join their EV production facility, also in Chattanooga. Uh, it's going to be making cells there for the US and the North American cars, actually, all coming out of Chattanooga. First one's going to be the ID4 in 2022. Okay, next, trucks. Volvo announced their full range of heavy duty trucks, and hauliers can now buy those. Well, they will be able to buy them in the future as all electric versions. The move is seen as a massive step towards eliminating fossil fuels in the hauling industry, a realization of Volvo's commitment to be climate neutral, says Clean Technica. Volvo trucks are running real world tests right now of pure electric trucks. There's the Volvo FH, the FM, and the FMX. These are heavy duty trucks, even heavy duty semi trucks, quietly getting on and making pure electric trucks. Not getting the headlines that others do, but Volvo, big name in trucking. Even the Mac branded versions of the same trucks in the US uh, also are being tested. Uh, they bought 50% of Daimler's hydrogen business recently. So again, continuing to invest in commercial vehicles, at least in fuel cell technology, seems like a sensible thing to do. 
Okay, finally, uh, re- researchers at the Southwest Research Institute, the SWRI, are demonstrating certain security vulnerabilities in common EV charging equipment, proving it is technically possible to hack them. Uh, says Utility Dive, they said it was able to perform limiting the charge rate, blocking a vehicle from charging, and even overcharging a vehicle's battery through hacking the charger. Now, these are concerning vulnerabilities, but they won't uh, they won't slow down EV adoption in the near term at least, according to the experts who did this research. The project is designed to identify potential threats in common EV charging hardware and put new security in place. And that is your podcast for today. Well, thank you for listening. As always, there are 927 previous shows in the archive. That archive lives online. The blog is evnewsdaily.com. Couldn't do it without my premium partners, Phil Roberts of Electric Future, Brad Crosby, Avid Technology, Audi of Cincinnati East, Porsche of The Village in Cincinnati and Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East. Also, nationalcarcharging.com and alohacharge.com. Well, I would give to be in Hawaii right now as it's very, very cold here. Uh, Derek Riley at the EV Review Island YouTube channel and Richard at rsimons.co.uk, the electric vehicle specialists. Have a wonderful day. Catch you tomorrow. And do remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid.